Kevin O'Leary, uh, who has taken a huge bet on North Dakota. We're going to learn why and why he says the blue states are punishing success and the hey days are over. Kevin, uh, good to be with you. Uh, nice to see you again. Great. Thank you very much. Now, I want to talk about uh, your, your big bet here on North Dakota. Uh, I want to talk about all that. But first, I want to just get your take on the latest from the Federal Reserve. Uh, we saw the 25 basis point move, the ECB as well, 50 basis points. Um, Powell's making it clear that the Fed is cl closely watching more than anything uh, the jobs data. Uh, the question is, does it just feel like we've just become too labor dependent at this point, Kevin? You know, I look at it this way. If you look at the frequency and the, and the size of these hikes, now we have 25 basis points, and it's, and it's the, the market is widely anticipating another 25, then maybe one more 25. So no matter how you look at it, in hedging your bets, we're two-thirds through the process. So we're, we're in the back end of, of hikes. Now, the question is, do we get a down print on payroll anytime soon? The minute you see that, the Fed will pause. And so there's a chance, and I'm not saying it's no better than 50-50, that this is the last rate hike for a while. And that's what the market's anticipating. So you're going to see a lot of tribulation on valuations, both on fixed income and on equities, trying to determine is that and was that the last hike, or is there more to come? Now, what we don't know yet, because earnings reports have been pretty good, just print the, the print from uh, Meta yesterday was right. you know, nothing less than phenomenal. And so at the end of the day here, um, we haven't really seen the grind into the market of lack of momentum in sales and then margin and then earnings. That's anticipated to be coming. So I think it's going to be very interesting this year. My anticipation for terms of what we'll get in returns are going to be around 6% from equity. And I'm talking the whole year. And another 2% yeah. from div yield or distribution. So an 8% year, which is kind of right in the middle of what you anticipate. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that you think this might be the rate, last rate increase for, for, for a bit here, because I feel like reading between the lines, and, and, or he made it quite clear that this would not be the last, and they're not happy with what they're seeing yet on the inflation front. You know, it's because they haven't seen a down print on payroll. They haven't seen any slowdown yet, that, although, you know, CPI has re come down a bit, which is good. But I think the thing that they're looking for, and certainly Powell talks about it enough, is payroll. I mean, you know, it's a very competitive environment now. Try and hire people. We still have a hard time hiring for the positions we have open. So we haven't right. seen that slowdown yet. So I think he's more focused on payroll than anything. That's why I say if there's a slowdown on payroll, at least one down print, I think he pauses and waits for the next payroll. I, I think right. there's a chance that it could be the last one. I didn't say 100%. But I'm feeling that way, and that's why the markets have been rather interesting this year. You know, most people were anticipating a pretty horrible January. That's not what happened. It was hard to lose money in January. I want to ask you, what, are, what is everyone doing that they don't want these jobs? <laughs> it's a great question. What I've learned is consumers still have fat wallets. They still have a lot of cash sitting around. They were prudent in terms of all the freebies they were given out. Um, when we talk to new recruits in their early 30s, people that have already had one job now moving, they have a lot of demands. 40% of them won't work in an office, particularly in infrastructure work or in accounting or payroll or logistics or compliance, those departments. I'm just interviewing a third round for, for more financial analysts. Um, I found two great ones to add to Alluri Ventures. We need them for this North Dakota initiative. Not a chance they're coming into the office. And these guys are, and this one woman, one guy, <laughs> they, I, yeah. you know, they, they, they've never worked in an office. They don't even know what that means. And so there's a whole new tonality to the workforce that I don't think right. everybody's adjusted to yet. Isn't that crazy, Kevin? Because I remember when I started my career as a journalist, you know, 21 years old, whatever, in Montreal, and I was going to work, come hail, come you know, high water in the blizzards, in minus 40 degree weather, walking from, you know, plus that metro station, you know, 20 minute walk to get to the office. And you better believe you got to be there on time. You try telling like you. a 21. I'm, I'm just like you, but I did it with no shoes on because I couldn't afford them. <laughs> Crazy. All right. Let's talk North Dakota now. You're saying forget New York, forget Massachusetts, forget California. This is where it's no longer at. 
Why? Yeah, Why I mean, North look, Dakota? We never talk about North Dakota. No, we don't, but we are now. I mean, you know, here's look look at the data back from 1954 when they started tracking venture capital. And this fund, this initiative for North Dakota is pure venture. It's startups, it's paid, you know, going into early stage round A, round B companies. And there's a good reason to do that. But think about the data. It says that since 1954, when they started tracking this 68 years ago, almost 95% of venture capital occurred either around Silicon Valley in California or around MIT in Massachusetts. Now, those are the worst states in the union to do business in. Why would you ever put money into Elizabeth Warren's land where she punishes you for success, where you get super taxed the minute you start making any money? Or California, which isn't even in business. I would never put money into either of those states, nor New York. I just took a big project out of upstate New York that was going to be powered out of back of the meter in Niagara Falls. It's so messed up. Their policy so terrible. We moved it to Norway. Same thing with New Jersey. The place to do business are in these flyover states that have become very competitive. And the secret sauce is what we were just talking about. Today, 40% of your employees, I don't care what sector you're in, any of the 11 sectors of the S&P, 40%, between 30 and 40, are gonna work remotely. So you can put your headquarters anywhere. So why not stick it in Fargo, where I have fantastic policy, fantastic regulations, pro-business governor in Burgum, low taxes, and an environment where they want business. They don't right. hate you. They want you there. And so that's what we're doing. We're, we're running a mandate. The first 45 million or the next 45 million we're putting into North Dakota. We're telling every company anywhere, you want to build up more resources? Let's do it in North Dakota, where we have the second largest Microsoft campus, one of the largest manufacturing facilities for biotech and vaccines, massively educated workforce, great standard of living, access to schools. It's a beautiful place, a huge arts community, so much to do, Bismarck, Fargo, there's only 750,000 people in the state. It's the fourth largest GDP per capita, and it's going to become the first in the next three years because they have mountains of energy. I love this place. It's absolutely fantastic. So why would I give anything to Elizabeth Warren? Why would I leave anything there so she can punish me for success? Nah, I'm going to Fargo. That's the plan. Florida works, Texas works, Montana works, South Dakota works anywhere except where they hate business. That's the new strategy, uh, competition uh, 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 of was, states. Yeah, I was gonna say, why not Florida or Texas, but do you feel like it's just oversaturated now and you wanna do something You can't even get out of office the space here. You try and get office space in Miami, yeah. impossible. We're totally sold out everywhere. Um, so it's interesting, I, I believe the idea of investing in Fargo came about from a Shark Tank episode. That's right. right from one of your investments. Tell us about that. It was called PRX Performance. And it was a company that made gym equipment that folded up into the wall. So if you're in a 900 or 1200 square yeah, foot yeah, condo, yeah. you can right. you know, put, it, put it aside. Sales exploded. It went from zero when they're on Shark Tank seven years ago to 50 million in sales. And I said, this is one of my most successful Shark Tank deals. So I flew to Fargo, first time I ever went there. We shot an update. I went ice fishing when it was 50 below. What a gas that was. And then I started to meet the governor, the commissioner, and a lot of the you know, city mayors, everything else. And they were pro-business like crazy. And I thought, okay, let's go back there. And that's how the whole thing started. Now, since we've announced this program, which is funded by the U.S. Treasury, we're now in negotiations with four other states to do exactly the same thing. But I'm only going to work with states that are pro-business. If they have high taxes or very crazy regulatory environments, no interest at all. I don't see what, I'm very happy about the competition. The U.S. Constitution contemplated competition between states. Now we finally have some. So why would you put money in California? That place is nuts. I would never put money there. This is the way to go. North Dakota and pro-business states.